Hi, this is Janice Crows from 5MinutesForMom.com and Janice Crows Photography. Welcome to our PicMonkey tutorials here at 5 Minutes for Mom. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use PicMonkey's clone stamp tool. I've chosen this photograph to demonstrate how to remove or clone stamp out a portion of your photograph. I want to remove this leash and portion of this bag. To find the clone stamp tool, go to the FX tab. and then scroll down to the bottom to find these advanced tools. The advanced tools are only available for the Royale members, but the subscription is so affordable, I highly recommend every PicMark user purchases it. Click on Clone, and you will get this dialog box up. I realize that I want to remove quite a large portion, so I'm going to choose a large brush size to get me started. Then I will choose a smaller brush size when I want to fine tune. I like working with a very soft brush, but this time I might adjust my hardness a little bit since I do have quite a bit I want to remove. You can see the source button is highlighted blue. That means it's active and where you click will become the source spot for your cloning. I'm going to click up here so I have lots of room to maneuver with all of this great area that I can use as a source. Because as you see, when I click, I can now click and drag to paint that part into my image. Isn't that fabulous? Because of this green highlighted circle, we can tell exactly where we are cloning. So if I go down a little far here, oops, I'm in his arm, and I've painted in arm down here. There are two options to fix what I've done. In this case, I will just undo my last action and get rid of it. The other way to fix any mistakes is using the eraser tool. So let's make a selection close to Doggy's nose and try painting. So we're painting and we've made a mistake. We have Doggy nose. And we've gone onto his hand a bit. We want to fix those mistakes, but let's say we don't want to undo the entire action. We can choose the eraser tool. Let's say we want to use a smaller eraser size and let's say we want to really soften that eraser. We can erase back and erase out his nose. Those mistakes are gone, and now we can resume cloning, paying much more attention, of course, to where our source is coming from. I'm going to get a larger brush again and get back to painting off my image. One of the keys is to keep changing those source spots to make sure you stop running and don't run into trouble. I have my brush hardness set to still quite a soft brush, but I don't like what I've done right here, so I'm just going to come back here to this eraser and fix that a bit. I think I'm a bit closer than I like. Oops, don't like that. Let's undo what I just did with my eraser and try that again. A bit. If you remember to click, more often than making just all one long brush stroke, then your undo actions won't undo everything you've just worked on. Go back here and work down here on my spot. I don't like the color that just changed. Let me see. Get a new source spot. Oops. If you go over the edge, you'll get this line in your image, so be careful of that and undo when you get that line mixed up. Oops, ran into his arm. I'm try to move fast sometimes. Oops, select. I'm going to reselect your clone, your source if you need to. Oh, I don't want like that last click. Now I'm going to try to deal with this more tricky area here. I'm going to close this dialog box so that it's not in my way. Reselect my source up here, and I'm going to start painting down here. You can see I started far over, so I had lots of room to paint. And I'm going to come in here with this large brush, and then I will switch to a smaller brush to fine tune.
also what I can do. Just come in a little closer and know that I can use my eraser to get back what I just done. So right here, let's go my phone the only sore spot right here. Color was bothering me there. It's nice to it's nice to work with such a modeled background, and then everything doesn't have to be perfect. As well, I'm going to apply a texture in in, in my next video as I work to make this flash photo a little bit more appealing. And so, especially if you know you're going to apply a texture after, you don't have to worry about everything being too perfect. I ran over his um, finger a little, so I'm going to choose my eraser. I'm going to make a bit smaller of a brush size. I'm going to soften up my edge, and I'm going to bring back his finger and that shadow a bit. Hmm. I don't like that. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to bring my eraser hardness right down. Now I need to work on some fine tuning to remove this rest of this red leash. To do so, I'm going to want to use the fade tool, but I'm not going to want to fade the rest of the work I've done. So I'm going to hit apply. Before I hit apply, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm happy with the cloning that I've done and that I'm not going to want to use eraser to go back and modify my changes. Once I hit apply and open it up again, when I use the fade, it will apply only to the new changes, not the old ones. Now I'm going to scroll in. I'm just scrolling using my roller rolling mouse. And I'm going to select the source. I'm going to bring down my fade and keep my brush as a very soft brush. And I'm just going to try to work to remove some of the red leash. Enhance my fade a bit. Oops. I'm going to go into my eraser and fix what I just did there. Tidy up that hand a bit. Go back to my source, choose a source, don't like that, undo that. To remove this, this is a bit tricky, so I'm going to try a few different ways. I'm going to try to get a bit closer, get more of the red gone. Still have some red here that's bothering me. I may have to take down my fade a bit and make it all be a bit stronger. Remove some of this fur. It's just not going to be as furry. And then I'm going to choose some of this to fix here. So I'm going to change my source and I'm going to click. Doing this, you're going to have to sometimes change your source a bit more often so that you're not repeating what you just did, so that your source isn't moving along with you. Finding the right source is just a tricky little game of playing sometimes. You want to find the right color to make the changes not quite as noticeable. And spend far too much of your life fiddling here in the clone stamp. Scroll up to see how it's going. Hmm. Sometimes it's tempting to just remove a whole portion, but I don't want to move this elbow too much. Oops. That spilled out his hair. 
let him have a lot more hair there. No, don't like that. Okay. So remove a bit of his hair. And then. Just need some shadow there. Just make it look a bit more natural. So here, a little bit of shadow. The shadow but we have some shadow occurring naturally it's not perfect but when we scroll out it's not as noticeable and I spend far too much of my life being a perfectionist now I'm just going to touch up and remove any marks from my cloning just soften things up I'm going to do that by making a larger brush and just smoothing, oops, smoothing things out a bit. Again, I'm applying a texture after this, and if you know you're going to do that, save yourself from driving yourself crazy with too much perfectionism. I tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. This little hair here is bothering me, so I'm going to go in and adjust that. I'm going to want to use it at full strength. So if I adjust my fade here, it's going to adjust. If I adjust my fade here, it's going to adjust all of what I've done, as you can see. And I want to keep that. Right. Actually, I want to keep it full. So I'm actually going to remove that fade that I had on before. Because I ended up doing it well enough that I don't feel like I need a fade. That all works. Just doing last minute things to it. And I'm going to zoom in, move to a much smaller brush, adjust my source, and remove this dog's hair so it doesn't look like the man's hand has whiskers. So there you go. We've removed the leash and the bottom portion of the photo and replaced it using PicMonkey's clone stamp. If you feel like the picture now is still not perfect, it doesn't match exactly or it's not dark enough to blend, you can use some of the other tools or textures to fix the photo. I'm actually going to apply a texture and that will be in the next video, in my next video, of how I help save this flash photo and edit this flash photo. But before I do so, I'll show you how you can just use the burn tool. Oops. There you go. Thank you, PicMonkey, for reminding us to apply. <laughs> apply the clone, and then I'm going to go into Burn, and I'm just going to darken this a bit so it matches the darkness up here. You can choose your light or dark or, or mid, and again, in your brush size. And I'm just going to start burning this in a little. So it's not so much lighter from the top. To make it match, I'm going to go to the eraser erase a bit what I've done here. Try it again. I feel like the original when I did it mid was too dark. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to cancel. If you just don't like what you're doing, you want to try it again, just hit cancel. So let's do that again. Let's use the burn tool. I'm going to go to light. The mid was a bit dark for me. So I'm just going to go to light, and that's much nicer. And just burn that in a little. Put a little bit extra to the corner. Let me take a little bit down here. So the burn tool has helped us bring down the brightness a bit help the photo blend together more naturally, and yet we have no red leash. So that is how you use PicMonkey's clone tool. Check out my next tutorial to find out how I continue to enhance this photo, remove the more flashy look of it, and use textures to enhance and soften and create a more appealing final image. Thanks so much for joining us at 5 Minutes for Mom, and thanks PicMonkey for creating such fantastic tools.